big warm welcome to this care collab for Prostechia cochleata. Thank you so much for being here. In my case, I have a Prostechia cochleata variety Lancifolia. That's the orchid there on the right. The orchid on the left that has a semblance of Rod Stewart there. <laughs> uh, we call that orchid Cousin It here at Ninja Orchids. If it's the first time for you to see and watch my channel or any of my videos, welcome as well. But that would be Cousin It, and I thought it would be an opportune time to bring him into the fold because these two orchids have never met each other, even though they've been in my collection the same time. And Cousin It gets a little bit curious, especially around the fall and winter time, because that is when he is happiest. He is maturing all his new growths, and then he shows up and wants to present himself, introduce himself, be in the viewfinder. But I'm not only joined by Maxillaria variabilis on the left, Cousin It, I'm also joined in this care collab today by Orchids 365, Plants and Other Things, and Roger's Orchids, who will also be showing their Prostechia cochleata. As I mentioned, I have a Prostechia cochleata variety Lancifolia, and what I actually wanted was the Prostechia lancifolium. That is what it said on the tag, that is what it said in the shop, and that is not what I got. So I was a little bit disappointed, you know, sometimes when you buy something you look forward to because that is the bloom you wanted, and it turns out it was a Prostechia cochleata, and thankfully it got identified as a variety Lancifolia, so I can see where they made the mistake, but they're not the same, you know, a cochleata. Variety Lancifolia has other attributes in the bloom, but it is not a Lancifolium bloom which has a likeness that leans more towards a Prismata carpa, which I will show you as a comparison. So when I show you the images of when my cochleata was in bloom, you will be able to see how the two differ. It does make a difference to me if I'm getting a cochleata or a lancifolium. Anyway, needless to say, look at this orchid. She's absolutely bonkers. So let's get in a little bit closer. She is a thirsty orchid. I'm here in Southern Spain and I have to tell you this orchid since she's been with me, she has been repotted every single year, and that is from 2018. January 2018 is when I got her, and she was just a little back division of a mature bulb and a new growth. Nothing exciting to say about the orchid when she arrived, but my goodness, this one is a happy grower. So if you're thinking about getting Prostechia cochleata, I'm gonna tell you now, you will not be disappointed because it is so vigorous. Even as a species, it is vigorous, which is wonderful. Some species would always take a little bit longer than any other kind of hybrid, not this one. So if you want something rewarding that makes you feel, yes, I know what I'm doing, I can grow orchids, and it is beautiful as well, then get yourself a Prostechia. It doesn't have to be Cochleata, but a Prostechia of any kind, and then just care for it the way you would any other Prostechia, because look at the insanity of what is going on in this pot. And this pot was taken care of early stages this year. I just had to clean it up and just take out the lecker a little bit. I did not film this repot, but I took out the lecker a little bit, made sure that the root system and the climate in the pot was fine, because you can see I grow in lecker and self-watering. So this reservoir right now is super full, because while I'm talking about her and showing her to you, I thought I might as well give her a little bit of a silicon soak because this orchid is prone to mealybugs. My goodness, lush green leaves, young, beautiful spring green leaves. Mealybugs are like, um, I'm having me some of this. And I'm like, oh, no, you're not. And silicon also strengthens the cell walls, especially when it comes to inorganic growing where everything is super neutral. There's nothing in the media at all that the orchid can draw from. I provide all that to the best of my ability. And you can see how she has lost leaves in the back. And that will happen in my climate, especially when it is hot and dry. I get super hot winds here, and then my humidity can drop down to 30% for most part of the year from April through to September. Now we are in September, I've had this year amazing humidity in August, absolutely unheard of, an average of 70% humidity for several extended weeks, which was deluxe for me. But the norm is 30% humidity. And then of course, it is very difficult for the evaporation and transpiration through the leaves for me to keep up. And in my case, 
they will drop the leaves. But you can see the pseudobulbs are still very, very happy in the back and create great, great structures. So in future, if I want to divide this orchid, I can easily propagate by these back pseudobulbs because of the vigor of this orchid. I mean, it's absolutely insane. You can see here that I've had three spikes this year. Last year I had two, so we're doing really well. And these have bloomed out. They're right here, sorry. These bloomed out back in June. And I don't cut my spikes, even if they're spent, until they brown up. And it's holding on to the spikes. I'm like, okay, if that's what you want to do, go ahead, be my guest. As long as you're green, you're fine. I'm not going to interfere by cutting them off, even though it looks maybe aesthetically a little bit unpleasant, but it doesn't bother me. Now you can see one dry leaf tip that is very low humidity at some point, but that's okay. The rest this year have grown absolutely beautifully. And then there's a bit of sunburn in the back because she lives permanently with me on my shelf, whether she's in bloom or not, in the south facing part of my patio, which is called the blooming alley. So I move her up or down depending on the angle of the sun, which in July and August is at its highest in the sky. So she has super bright light, but not direct sun. As you can see, uh, direct sun here in Southern Spain will do some damage relatively quickly if there is no airflow. However, right now, I am still fertilizing full throttle at 300 parts per million because she is chucking out four new growths. Five, actually. One, two, three, four, five. What a show it's going to be next year. So she has been getting fertilizer since May when her spikes started to form. They form relatively quickly and then they do bloom out quite fast as well. And I don't get a sequential bloom on mine but I'm telling you the fragrance is out of this world. It is knockout. If I had this orchid in a grow room indoors, it would just take over the entire grow space with its heavy, heavy maple syrup, molasses kind of sweet fragrance. It is so intense. It is not something that is headache inducing when you're outdoors, but if you are sensible to fragrances, I would say caution with this one indoors, keep the windows open or keep it in a room that's relatively large because this orchid will be your air freshener for at least three weeks. Now mine took about four to five weeks to finish blooming because not all the spikes opened at the same time, which was wonderful and which I could tolerate in my blooming alley because it is quite intense, I have to say. Now, personally, I do not mind heavy scented, sweet, fragranced orchids, absolutely not. But I speak from the experience of when this one is in bloom, it's always outdoors. I wouldn't know how I would handle it if it was indoors. So I don't find this fragrance unpleasant. Meanwhile, it's not around long enough to actually become problematic, let's say, to the senses. But you can see that these growths are already forming sheaths, at least this mature one here but these won't bloom until next year. So as yet they have to form their bulb, 300 parts per million active growth, and it gets flushed every time the reservoir is empty. I flush it through with plain RO water in an attempt to make sure that the surface of my pot, that there is no any kind of mineral deposit residue up here. And from what I can see, I'm doing really well with that. So 300 parts per million when it active growth, it is going into beast mode anyway. It is hungry and it is thirsty. Right now, I have to fill up the reservoir almost twice a week. It's almost behaving like a catacetinae. That's how thirsty it is. And then once we head into the winter, it will have already formed all the structures. So I can start to pipe down on the fertilizer. And then all I'm going to do is give it regular flushes throughout the winter months just to tide it over. I do not want my microfiber in the pot to ever dry. Now, this is not going to be the level of the reservoir ever throughout the winter. My dining room temperatures where it lives in the winter can drop to 14 degrees Celsius. Not so good when growing in Lekka because of the evaporative cooling. So I never really have my water reservoir full in the winter, but I will always maintain the dampness of the microfiber by flushing through the pot ever so often as I feel the microfiber starting to get a little bit drier, I'll give the orchid a proper flush and then I let it drain and set it back into the mask without any water in the reservoir. So 
My attempt is just to keep the microfiber damp enough so I do not lose the wicking characteristic of the lacquer. It is only in lacquer. Now, as this orchid grows, and if I pot her up again next year into the next size up, I'm going to contemplate giving it even more water retentive media because the bigger the orchid gets, the needier it's going to be regarding its care. It's going to want more water, more fertilizer, more often, more regular. So what I would probably do is bump it up and whatever the root system tells me when the time comes, if I need to do a cleanup for all the aeration and re-establish a proper healthy climate in the pot, I will then use small lacquer for this orchid because I may not be able to keep up with the watering with five new growths next year, plus the heat. So keep that in mind when you have a very vigorous orchid as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and this one is a very vigorous orchid, then the needs and the demands are going to change. And possibly further down the line, a mixed lacquer setup in the pot might not be adequate for the next grow season. And we would have to compensate for that. And in my case, I would just fill up it around with small lacquer. But my goodness, what an orchid, I tell you. Apart from the mealybugs, which I treat very, very regularly with garlic alcohol, but it's doing fine. The nicks that you see in the back here on this back bulb, this is one of the first bulbs that I got it with. Let me see if, there we go. You can see some bites or nicks. Those aren't actually bites. That is from it falling off a shelf that came out of the wall because I had hung some tolumnias along the ledge of that shelf and the shelf released itself from the wall, including my cochleata here and the leka punctured holes into the oldest pseudobulb. So that looks like it's been lunch for a pest, but it hasn't. But you can see <laughs> this bulb is three years old. They hold on to their storage units very, very long, even though in my climate, maybe not to the leaves. But let's see. Let's see for 2022 what this orchid has in store. All I can say is if you're contemplating one, if you have one, know that it is extremely thirsty. Know that it wants a lot of water, a lot of fertilizer in active growth, and then give it a rest when it's finished its growth prior to it blooming. There's no need to fertilize. Keep the pot climate healthy with a lot of fresh water in intervals. And then when the spikes start to show through the sheaths, start with a fertilizer again, because they are very, very energy consuming. And the new growths, actually start or ready to swell at the base while the orchid is already in bloom. So it requires a lot, a lot of fertilizer. And then just keep it going until it goes into some kind of a rest stage before the whole cycle starts again. I must say I have gotten over my initial disappointment that it is a cochleata. Well, what can you do? There are reasons that certain plants come into your life, I guess. This one, there was the reason that it is simple, it is vigorous. It is fragrant, certain factors that I really appreciate in a characteristic of an orchid. And to me, it is fuss free, bar some mealy bugs here or there. Despite being such a vigorous orchid, of course, there's always an interest that you can be repotting an orchid and it's a bad time of year. We are heading into fall. One wouldn't actually say this is a good time for repotting. But with orchids, it's a different story. If an orchid needs to be repotted, any orchid should be repotted when new roots grow, no matter the time of year. So if you're wondering about this orchid, well, we can just look at the structures, the new growths, how far up they are, and have a look, see how they compare with the old bulbs. But if we look into the pot, we can see that now would be a great time if this orchid were in need of a repot. This would be the time to go in because new roots are starting already and it doesn't matter to the orchid whether we're heading into fall. So just bearing that in mind, if there's any questions, despite the fact that it is not the time of year in adverted commas, don't go by the season, go by what the orchid itself tells you if it is indeed in need of a repot and go ahead regardless of time of year. This orchid is so vigorous, it is forgiving. I just wanna once more say thank you so much to Orchids365 plants and other things, and Roger's orchids. I also want to apologize for any noise pollution you might have heard in the background that I couldn't edit out. I don't know what is going on beyond the hedge. I don't even dare look, but it is noisy. So I do apologize for that if that filtered through. But let me say thank you to you who watched the video, who listened to me. If you have any questions, if I didn't circle back around anything regarding this orchid, I'll be very happy to elaborate further if there's anything I might have missed. 
Have yourselves a beautiful, beautiful day. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.